Okay, so today we're going to show you some tips and tricks to demonstrate just how easy it is to create really cool, dynamic, peer-to-peer -peer apps for the Newbound network using nothing but HTML and JavaScript. Now, the apps that are built into the Newbound network have a tremendous amount of functionality, and all of that functionality is available to you through a JavaScript API. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create a basic chat application that uses the PeerBots API to create a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection between web browsers and use that to create a chat application. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you a neat hack on the FileBot which will allow us to host HTML files that we're gonna we're gonna drop out there. Now, clicking on the this files directory, the files directory is a directory that we create for you automatically, and that's just so that in your file bot you have a default place to drop some files. Now, what's unique, what's neat about this is it exposes exactly where on your hard drive Newbound is keeping its runtime files. It creates a Newbound folder in your user's home directory. And it's got a subdirectory called botd. And in there, every single app in the Newbound network gets its own uh, subdirectory. So the FileBot's got a FileBot subdirectory. And inside each of each app's subdirectory, there's a subdirectory called HTML. And if you drop files in there, they become available through the web browser for that app. So what we're going to do is we're going to point a new directory called FileBot Apps to that the FileBot's HTML directory, and we're going to drop our HTML for our new app. We're going to call it Chatbot. We're going to drop our files for that in there. So let's go ahead and create some, some basic HTML. I'm going to crank up the font size here to 18 so it's a little easier to read. And we're just going to create a basic HTML document here. And we got our header and we're gonna create a title for it. We'll call it chatbot. And we're just gonna create a simple body for it. And we're just gonna type XXX in there so that uh, we can have a simple page with triple X just to get, start, get us started here, kind of a placeholder for content. And there we go. So that's our HTML. And we're just gonna save that to the desktop. We're going to call it chat.html. All right. So now that we've got that, we're going to go back to our FileBot here and our FileBot apps directory. And we're just going to drop that chat.html file right in there. Now, as you can see, it's available directly through the web browser. And there we have our simple page called chatbot with three X's on it. OK, let's make our our uh, HTML here a little bit more sophisticated. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to steal some HTML from the uh, from the Push to Talk app because it's got some of the features that we want. It's got this uh, peer bar here across the top that lets you know which devices you're currently connected to. The ones in green are the ones you're connected to. So let's steal the JavaScript here off the top and just drop that into our new uh, HTML file here into the header and we'll adjust the indentation to be consistent because we're a little OCD and we'll get rid of the stuff we don't need and now let's drop some stuff into the body. We're going to steal some more from the push to talk app here. We're just going to steal the the beginning here for the jQuery mobile um, that gives us a nice uh, header bar and uh, we're going to also steal the part that uh, gives us a place to drop in the, uh, the peer bar from, uh, from the, the Push to Talk app here. And we're just going to paste that in as well. And then finally, we're just going to put in some additional HTML here that is for the actual uh, chat application. First, we're going to put in a, a place where we can uh, view the dialogue as it scrolls by. And then we're going to add a place 
where we can, a text area here where we can enter in the text that we want to send to the chat. And then finally, we're gonna create a button where we can, uh, we can click send and it will actually send that text over the Newbound network. All right, now that is pretty much it for the HTML of our application. Like I said, it's not, uh, not a whole lot of code here. Um, now we're gonna add a little bit of JavaScript and then you'll see just how easy it is to get this whole thing going. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, some functionality that kicks off when the page gets created for the very first time. So we're gonna hijack the, this is taking advantage of the connections, uh, JavaScript and CSS that we've, we've inserted here at the top. And that uh, is, that comes standard with the Newbound network and it's just a, an easy way to drop that peer bar onto the top of, of any application. So uh, when we create our, uh, our document, we're going to call the uh, the functionality that's that's right that's built into the connections.js uh, file there that we've linked, and we're basically just going to call build connection bar, and we're going to pass into that the name of the div where we want it to build the peer bar, and. In addition to that, we're going to pass in a callback function for it to call once the peer bar has been built. So let's go ahead and create that open web socket method here now. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, get the URL for the web socket connection. So we're just going to get the URL of the current document and basically we're just going to replace the HTTP with a WS and we're good to go. All right, so now that we've constructed our URL, we're just going to create a local variable here called connection and we're going to create a new web socket to, uh, to connect to our backend functionality. So now we need to override some functions here uh, on our web socket so that when First of all, it opens. We're going to send a simple command to the back end. Now, the default behavior, if you don't override on the back end, if you don't override the functionality of WebSockets, we've got uh, some commands built in, one of which is called, uh, is called subscribe. And basically, you can subscribe to a channel. And a, a ch subscribing to a channel basically means that uh, you're, you're creating a channel for everybody that you're connected to over the Newbound network. So if somebody else is running the same app and their app subscribes to that channel, anything that you send over that WebSocket will come out the other end on their WebSockets. And so you can broadcast to the entire group of folks that you're connected to that are running the app at the same time. And obviously anything that they send then comes in through your WebSocket connection. So here we're just gonna call send on our connection and we're gonna send the subscribe command and the name of the uh, channel that we wanna to subscribe to, the chat channel. And that's all we need to do here on open. So let's be thorough here and create an on error function. And we're not really gonna do much there, but uh, when, when we get an error, we'll log it to the console and that's good for debugging purposes. And then finally, we're going to create an on message functionality here for our connection, where basically when we get a message, we're going to extract the text from uh, the data as it comes in. We're going to turn it into a JSON object, and we're going to pull some variables out, it, out of it. First of all, uh, when we get a message that's been broadcast to a channel, it's wrapped in, in JSON with some, some metadata. Uh, and one of those uh, variables is the peer, which is the name of the machine that sent it. And we also uh, get a variable called data, which is whatever text that they sent. 
in in their their send command. And so once we've parsed out that data, and we're just going to uh, put it into the the display here, and format it a little bit, and then uh, there we go. And then finally. Uh, last thing we're going to do is we're just going to stash our connection somewhere where we can easily retrieve it later. I don't, I don't know why I, I do this the old-fashioned way, but I get a kick out of it. Anyway, uh, so now that we've put it there for safekeeping, that's pretty much it for our uh, open WebSocket function here. Now, the only thing left to do is to write a quick function that gets called when we press our, our, our send button and uh, we're going to call that send text here from the on click there and basically all we're going to do is we're going to grab the text out of the text area and we're going to send it over our WebSocket connection and then once that's sent, we're going to uh, clear out the text area and append it to, and well, first we'll append it to the, uh, the display and then clear out the text area. And then we should pretty much be good to go. If we haven't made any typos or, uh, or mistakes here, I'm just kind of coding on the fly. Hopefully this will work, let's see. Oh, looks like I put that, changed that in the wrong place. Let's grab it and put it where it's supposed to be. There we go. And make those changes again. There we go. And all right. Now we should be done. So we'll just save our app here, our HTML and we'll go to our filebot apps folder here and we'll grab our chat.html file and overwrite the one that's out there and let's see if it worked all right let's check the javascript console here and see if we oh we've got an error what did we do oh look at that <laughs> Case is important, boys and girls. Uh, so let's go back to our HTML here and properly camel case our WebSocket and see if that fixes things. All right, so we dropped the new file over the old one. And did that take? Yeah. See the progress bar, I don't believe it happened. Here we go, let's try that again. All right, probably didn't need to do that, but better paranoid than, well, you can make your own determination there. Okay, let's see, any uh, errors here? Oh, of course, here is not defined, what did I do? Oh, <laughs> we put it in the wrong place and then didn't get rid of it. All right, let's, let's, sorry for that. All right, let's do that real quick. All right, boom, there we go. Let's see if that did the trick. And we save, we copy the file over again, and we'll try again. And third time's a charm, right? No errors, beautiful. All right, so now let's create a new window here and We'll go out to another machine that I've got running the Newbound network. It happens to be on my local network, but it could be anywhere in the world. That's the beautiful thing about the Newbound network. We create these direct, secure, peer-to-peer -peer connections between apps, no matter where they are, no matter what firewall they're behind. We're connecting devices safely and securely. So now we're going to do the same thing on the on the remote device. We're going to create a file bot apps folder that points to the HTML directory and we're going to drop our uh, chat.html file into the remote machines uh, file bot apps folder and let's uh, let's
let's split the split the screen here so that we can see both of them at the same time and we'll go to our chat page here and let's see if it works would you look at that we've got chat we've got chat all right so there you have it folks that's very quick and easy way uh, using just JavaScript and HTML, creating dynamic applications that speak to each other from browser to browser across the internet using the new Bound Network. Uh, looking forward to having you with us again in future videos. We'll be showing you more tips and tricks on how to create dynamic apps using the new Bound Network.